Hi all, thank you for joining our session, the road to interoperability in cloud native continuous delivery. My name is Fatih Dermanji. I work for Ericsson Software Technology as a developer based in Stockholm, Sweden. I am also co-chair of the Continuous Delivery Foundation Special Interest Group Interoperability. Hi all, I'm Kara Donamalk. I work at CloudBase with the Jenkins and Jenkins X open source projects. And I'm co-chair of the Continuous Delivery Foundation's Interoperability SIG. Thank you for joining our talk on the road to interoperability in cloud-native continuous delivery. In the context of continuous delivery, what do we mean by interoperability? Interoperability, composability, and extensibility are all terms to describe the openness of a system. That is, its ability to offer components that can be easily used by or integrated into other systems. However, integration and interoperability, while often used synonymously, are not the same and have significant differences. Integration is generally understood as combining applications to function together. These applications don't necessarily have common interfaces and often use different data formats. The result is often when engineering teams need to have these applications work together, they write glue code. And these custom solutions have maintenance costs. In addition, services can become tightly coupled and it can be a significant engineering effort to later replace one of the applications for something else. Interoperability, on the other hand, focuses on open interfaces and standardized metadata that enable controlled and defined access to services or information from a different application or system. Let's consider interfaces as an example of an abstraction which enables interoperability. If the interface is well-specified and openly available, multiple service providers can implement the service and enable customers to consume the service in a known way using the defined interface. This provides a number of practical advantages. For example, if client A consumes a service by B through a well-defined interface, A could switch to C's implementation of the same service, which uses the same interface, and A should not experience any failures. How B or C implement the service is not relevant to A, which is only concerned with the specifications of the interface. The ability to replace one implementation of a service with another that operates in the same way without causing failures is interoperability. Well-defined public interfaces enable interoperability by enabling both access and multiple implementations. The result for end users of those interfaces is that they have a choice in which implementation to consume and the ability to switch between implementations without experiencing any failures. In addition to open interfaces, standardized metadata is another abstraction that enables interoperability. Standardized metadata enable systems to incorporate content from other disparate and independent systems. In other words, interoperability is achieved through data formats and communication protocols, which the systems can use to function together in a standardized manner without deep customizations. The definition of interoperability in the CI-CD domain is not different from how it's defined in other domains. It is about data and the exchange of it. As you can see on the slide, Everything under integration is basically work that the end user has to do. And everything under operability is the result of work that has already been done when building the services that users consume. So the result is less work for end users. Okay, when we look at the continuous delivery landscape, and this landscape has been developed by the Continuous Delivery Foundation, we can see that the continuous delivery ecosystem is flourishing. There's a rapidly growing set of CI CD tools available for end users, and this is fantastic. The new tools and technologies being developed bring fresh approaches to problems or issues within the CI CD domain. However, the explosion in the number of tools is not without its challenges, interoperability among them. So let's look more closely at interoperability within the CI CD context. First, pipeline standardization and or standardization in pipeline languages. The goal here is to have the ability to migrate or run pipelines created on one tool on another one as is. Next, the ability to connect pipelines running on different tools in a standardized way. And pipeline data for traceability or visualization. The goal is to propagate data from CI-CD tools in a way that external tools can consume regardless of what CI-CD tool created that data. We will look at two open source projects that help you gain more visibility into your CI-CD system and consider the work that they are doing to map the different data formats of different tools and how greater interoperability could help. For CI-CD events, we defined an event following the cloud events definition as a data record expressing an occurrence and its context. 
The goal is the standardization of events so that CICD tools that adhere to the standard can interoperate with each other. The common theme across the different perspectives is data and exchanging data across various tools that may be employed by an organization as part of their CICD pipelines. The data could either be in the form of pipeline definitions, consumed by pipelines as input, or produced by pipelines as output. This means that the definition of interoperability in the CICD domain is similar to how it is defined in other domains. It's all about the data and exchanging data. Among the activities of the interop interoperability SIG, we look at existing case studies, such as how Jenkins X incorporates Tecton as its pipeline engine to help users build and deliver software using the cloud well. Jenkins X helps you manage the lifecycle of your application, including continuous delivery on Kubernetes. Jenkins X uses Tecton for standardized declarative pipeline APIs and build execution. When users install Jenkins X, Tecton is also installed into the Kubernetes cluster. When users create new applications or import existing ones, Jenkins X will automatically add pipeline as code Tecton resources to the Git repository alongside the source code and configure webhook handling for Git events. The Tecton pipeline resources that are added come from a base set of reusable pipelines that live in the Jenkins X pipeline catalog. The Jenkins X project essentially aligns its pipeline definitions with Tecton and make it, makes it super easy for any task from the Tecton catalog to be used inside a Jenkins X created pipeline. That level of interoperability between CI/CD tools is relatively rare and remains specific to individual projects. So now let's look a bit deeper into some of the benefits of interoperability, especially as regards the maintenance of your CI/CD system. And then we'll look at some tools that uh, some open source tools that have been created that help you in this regard. So additional benefits of interoperability. Greater interoperability between components provides many benefits, including improved scalability, reliability, and maintenance. There's much to be said about these benefits, and Fatih will touch on how interoperability improves scalability and reliability. So I'm going to look at how interoperability can help improve the maintainability of your system. And as we know, the effort or cost of software is actually not in the initial deployment and its development, but in its maintenance. One of the most important ways in which interoperability helps us with the maintenance of systems is in managing complexity. In complex software, for example, with systems with many components and much glue code to integrate them, there's a greater risk of introducing bugs when making changes. And reasons for that include that the system is harder for developers to understand and reason about, that there are some hidden assumptions, and that the unexpected interactions and unintended consequences of making changes are overlooked. So reducing complexity greatly improves the maintainability of software. Thus, simplicity is a key goal for any system. And making a system simpler does not necessarily mean reducing its functionality. It can re mean removing the complexity that is created when you are implementing the solution that you are trying to solve. <laughs> By reducing the need for application glue code, interoperability helps make your system simpler. It also reduces type coupling in the system, again, makes making your system much more maintainable. It is likely that the CI-CD system's requirements will change. There could be legal or regulatory requirements that change, versus the growth of your system will force some changes and new tools will emerge that you'd like to incorporate. The ease with which you can modify a system and adapt it to changing requirements is closely linked to its simplicity and its abstractions, such as standardized data formats. Good abstractions help reduce complexity and make the system easier to modify and adapt for new use cases. Increased interoperability can also help us with the operability of the system. <laughs> so good operability with standardized data models can help make routine tasks easy by exhibiting predictable behavior and thus minimizing surprises, providing good support for automation, and providing visibility into the runtime behavior and internals of your system with good monitoring. This increased visibility into your system can help with investigating failures and finding and fixing bugs. Good operability means having good visibility into your system's health and having effective ways of managing it. We're going to look at two really interesting open source projects that can help you gain more visibility into your CI CD system. The tools use variations of data mapping between different data structures to be able to achieve that visibility 
And so we will consider how greater interoperability could help reduce that mapping work and facilitate expansion of the capabilities of these tools. So four keys is an exemplary project showing insights that can be garnered by CI CD event data. The DevOps and assessment Dora team has identified four key metrics that measure your team's software delivery performance. And they are deployment frequency, that is how often an organization successfully releases to production, lead time for changes, and that is the amount of time it takes to get a commit into production, and time to restore service, just how long it takes for an organization to recover from a failure in production, and change failure rate, just the percentage of deployments that cause a failure in production. Using data on GitHub events in CI CD pipelines and making inferences about links between incidents and the events evolved, the Force key, Keys project generates the Four Keys Dora metrics. <laughs> One of the challenges of, of gathering these Dora metrics is that the deployment change and incident data are usually in disparate systems. So for the Four Keys, the solution was to create a generalized pipeline that can be extended to process inputs from a wide variety of sources. The Four Keys project, in effect, creates a mapping between events in different pipelines and tools in order to be able to generalize the data it receives. Standardized metadata for CI CD events would help with the mapping work that the Four Keys project has to do between the different data structures of the different tools. Creating standardized metadata for CI CD events is one of the main work streams of the interoperability SIG and is considered critical for the interoperability in the CI CD domain. So in addition, standardized metadata would help improve the maintainability of your CICD system by facilitating connections between pipelines and other systems, and will reduce the need to write adapters or group code. Standardized metadata of events in CICD pipelines would enable much greater interoperability between tools and platforms and more consistent data to be used for analysis. So now we'll look at Jenkins X CD indicators. So this add-on to the Jenkinsx CI CD platform helps you gain visibility into your CI CD system. These insights are based on the Dora metrics and the space framework. The metrics are generated using Git events as with the four keys project. In addition, Jenkinsx has a Kubernetes custom resource definition for a Jenkinsx specific type called a pipeline activity. A Kubernetes controller watches the Kubernetes API server for these custom pipeline activity events. The two main types of event data, so Git events and cluster events, are kind of mapped together and combined to create the metrics displayed in the Grafana dashboards, which is an example on the slide. <laughs> but this mapping for now happens within the context of one CI CD project, Jenkins X, and not across multiple projects or tools. It's a different mapping to that done by the Four Keys project using different data inputs but note that this mapping work between differing data formats needs to be done by both of these projects. So the tools and technologies that are used to construct CI CD pipelines and the pipelines themselves produce a lot of data. Organizations will collect, store, and use this data in various ways to get value out of it. Within the interoperability set, we are focusing on ways to reduce the need for data mapping between projects, tools, and other data sources by increasing interoperability through abstractions. I have mostly discussed standardized metadata for CI CD events as one of the ways to increase interoperability. Currently, the CI CD tools and technologies have no standardized way to produce and consume that metadata. That is why standardized metadata for CI CD events is one of our main areas of focus within the interoperability SIG. In addition, how such metadata could be consumed and produced is another topic. This is being looked at within the Continuous Delivery Foundation's event SIG. Fatih will now speak more about the work we are doing within the interoperability SIG and within the wider Continuous Delivery Foundation community. Thank you, Clara. I would like to start talking about Continuous Delivery Foundation, which is a sister community to Cloud Native Computing Foundation. As we all know, there are many great technologies out there one can use to help construct pipelines and establish Cloud Native Continuous Delivery within their organizations. However, this is not without challenges, and one of the challenges is the fragmentation within the CI CD domain. It is challenging to adopt, use, integrate, and contribute to various CI CD technologies. Here, Continuous Data Foundation comes to the rescue. 
Pontius Dere Foundation was founded during March 2019, hosted by New York Foundation, providing neutral home to collaborate for the next generation of continuous delivery. There are various ways Continuous Dere Foundation enables this. First and foremost, it provides home to various open source CI CD projects, such as Jenkins, Jenkins X, Spinnaker, Hecton, Screwdriver CD, and Ortelius. In addition to hosting projects, it also welcomes the creation of special interest groups and working groups for community members to come and collaborate on various topics within cloud native continuous delivery. There are currently five special interest groups security, MLOps, interoperability, best practices, and events, each looking into different areas within continuous delivery. As you can guess, these groups help community members to find like minded people to collaborate on a certain topic, reach out to the projects, and find ways to contribute to projects and broader continuous delivery ecosystem further. When it comes to the topics that are critical for interoperability within cloud native continuous delivery, I would like to talk a few of the key topics we identified and have been working on so you can see how it impacts our ability to become better doing continuous delivery. Four topics I would like to highlight during this talk are shared vocabulary, standardized metadata, events, and policy. As you notice, these topics sound pretty disconnected from each other. It was similar for us as well. However, when we started diving into the topic of interoperability and get into the details, we began realizing that the problem is much bigger than just how to get the CIC technologies interoperate with each other with well-defined interfaces or by standardized approach. It is also very challenging to tackle these problems alone in our community because there are already many things worked on by our sister communities that could help addressing them either by learning how they solve similar challenges or directly reusing some of the things they develop rather than us reinventing things. Let us start with shared vocabulary. Special interest group interoperability was approved during January 2020 by Continuous Delivery Foundation Technical Oversight Committee. So we are a little bit older than one year. We were very eager to get hands on with the technologies we are using and working with. However, we started noticing that even though everyone knows what continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment are, the terms we use to communicate with each other as humans differed. Apart from that, the terms used by different CIC technologies to describe the same thing differed as well, contributing to the challenges with human communication. For example, we identified three different terms are used by various technologies when they talk about pipelines, workflow, activity, and well, pipeline. As you can guess, this impacts our ability to communicate with each other since if I am using a certain technology, I naturally use the terminology of the tool during my day to day, -to -day communication, and I may have difficulty to the someone using a different technology, since that person is probably using a terminology of technology they are using. We then need to spend a few minutes to map the terms with each other or translate them so we can talk to each other. This made us realize that even before we start talking about technology issues, we need to put effort to improve how we communicate with each other. We spent a few weeks to discuss and collect the terms used by different CIC technologies on a document. Got community members from those projects to describe the terms we collect from their project's point of view. And we finally create the table that maps different terms across different technologies with each other. This helped us a lot, since we can now have an easy way to look at the terms we don't know and see what they mean for us using different terms. We call this document Rosetta Stone for CICD. And it currently has terms for 14 CICD projects. In addition to CICD technologies, we included terms for software configuration management tools, such as Gerrit, GitHub, and GitLab. This is a community maintained document and we welcome contributions. So please check it out. Are we done with this? Definitely not. Since this topic is relevant to more than interoperability area, this topic is continued to be worked by special interest group best practices. So they look at what certain term was first time described, such as continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, and DevOps, who defined the term first time and what it went through over the years. The next topic I want to discuss is standardized metadata. The CICD tools and technologies that are used to contract CICD pipelines 
and the pipelines themselves produce lots of data. We as users collect, store, use, and analyze this data in various ways to get value out of it. There are two questions we are looking at answers for metadata. First one is about what are the types of metadata we use? And the second one is about how we produce, consume, and use them. One of the contributing factors is the lack of standardized way for CIC tools and technologies with regards to what metadata is to produce and consume, and how to do that. It is true that there are initiatives across various open source projects to align the way this is done, such as in Toto, Kubernetes, Jenkins X, and Tecto. However, this topic requires a holistic and collaborative approach to identify the needs and challenges first, followed by analyzing existing efforts to explore, explore possibilities to streamline how this is done, either based on existing efforts or by combining them to come up with a standard way collaboratively. When it comes to what we are doing within Continuous Data Foundation and Special Interest Group Interoperability, we are currently documenting the types of metadata we produce and consume, starting with commit and artifact metadata. In addition to this, as I noted earlier, we are not after creating our own team, so we are also talking with various communities to learn more about what they are doing, see the overlaps, gaps, and explore collaboration opportunities. We recently started collaboration with SPDX community since we know that they also work on some of these topics within the data. I realized I didn't talk about how question for the metadata, how the metadata is produced, and, and how it is consumed. And this is on purpose, since one of the continuous data foundation special interest groups, special interest group events, is looking after this, explore the use of events within CICD. As we have been discussing since the beginning of our talk, today's continuous integration and continuous delivery systems do not talk to each other in a standardized way. This leads to problems related to interoperability, notification of failure issues, and poor automation. To address these issues, the topic of events was brought up by community members of special interest group interoperability to see if there are others who want to take a closer look at using events within CICD, given that events are everywhere, offering solutions to various issues such as scalability, resiliency, coupling, traceability, and so on. The discussion resulted in the formation of a work stream within special interest group interoperability with the aim to look at events more closely. In February 2021, this workshop stream has become a top level special interest group within Continuous Data Foundation to take the idea to the next level and look at standardizing around, around events within CICD. This special interest group is looking at how events can help to create CICD systems with a decoupled architecture that is easy to scale and makes it resilient to failures. Using events could also increase automation and connecting workflows from different systems to each other. And as a result, empowering, facing, visualizing, auditing of the connected workflow through these events. Community members from various open source projects take part in special interest group events, bringing their perspectives, thoughts, and ideas to the groups. Some of these communities are from within Continuous Data Foundation, such as Ekton, Spinnaker, Jenkins, and Otelius. We also have participation from other projects, such as Captain from Cloud Native Computing Foundation, IFO. The group aims to provide reference implementations, such as event listeners and event senders on top of cloud events. The last key topic I would like to highlight is policy, or to be more precise, policy-driven continuous delivery. This topic looks at how organizations could define standard policies for cloud-native continuous delivery pipelines. The topic was brought into special interest group interpreted recently, and it gives us a different perspective when it comes to what issues like interoperability within CIC domain causes. We know that most of the CIC technologies provide ways to enforce security policies within the organization. We also noticed a trend within CIC domain to adopt open policy agent for this so things look relatively encouraging. However, when we start going into the details and looked at various different use cases, we start realizing that there are things to work on further to enable organizations to define, define standard policies seamlessly. One of the things we noticed that 
the use of open policy agent by CICD technologies does not necessarily mean things will just work across different CICD technologies, since there are, three, there are slight differences when it comes to how these technologies bring open policy agent. In addition to this, there are other things to take into, into consideration, such as existence of external systems and their role in enforcing policies. As we try to illustrate in the diagram, if an organization uses two different CIC technologies, as well as external systems, as part of their policy enforcement mechanism, things get pretty tricky. Apart from that, there are other policies than security policies, such as business policies. These topics will also need to be looked into further. As noted earlier, this discussion started with special interest of interoperability recently, and we will reach out to various projects that are actively working, policy, working on policy topic, policy agent, and open network automation platform policy framework. Please join us if you have interest to participate in the discussions and contribute. So these are the four topics I've selected from the work we have been doing within Continuous Web Foundation. There are obviously more topics we are working on. So please join us and help us with these topics based on your experience and ideas and organizational needs. Until now, we talked about projects and communities. But what about end users? So I would like to touch to the end user aspects of continuous integration and continuous delivery as well. I am from an end user organization, and it is important for my organization to keep itself connected to the ecosystem and contribute to the projects we are using. This can't happen without active involvement and collaboration within open source, where we can take part in the discussions with the communities, which will impact how our organizations utilizing these technologies as part of their continuous delivery journey. Apart from joining and collaborating within the communities, it is also important to highlight our needs, use cases, and challenges to the projects from end user perspectives. Continuous Data Foundation End User Council provides such an opportunity and allows end user organizations to take part in the discussions. End User Council recently published its 2021 plan based on the input from end users. The topic the group planned to work on during 2021 are measuring DevOps success developer productivity and experience, building and technology choices, and governance and compliance. As you can notice, all these topics have relations to interoperability in one way or the other. For example, measuring DevOps success requires organizations to collect key metrics to evaluate delivery performance. It is very difficult to achieve that since the tools and technologies used by organizations, whether SCM or CICD, they expose, expose these metrics in different ways. So if you are from an end user organization, please join us, help us with our journey within Continuous Data Foundation. Finally, a few words about the future, which is what I try to summarize during discussions about the key topics. We work with various topics within various special interest groups. As you can see here, the three Continuous Data Foundation special interest groups looks at various topics and we will continue to study them. We would like to contribute to cloud native continuous delivery domain in various ways, white papers, case studies, best practices, specifications, and reference implementations, and so on. In addition to working with these topics within our community, we will either continue collaborating with other communities, such as CNCF, SPDX, Linux Foundation Networking, and so on, or look for new collaboration opportunities. It is critical that we as sister communities work on this like a single community to tackle these challenges and collaborate with them. Thank you. Most of the work in the CICD domain is driven by communities. And so we invite you and your communities to join us in the interoperability SIG. The ideas incubated and specifications developed by communities tend to become candidates for de facto standards, for example, with cloud events. We believe that cross collaboration and pollination across communities and industries is key to addressing challenges because these bring diverse perspectives that enable us to develop better solutions together. Please you join us in the Continuous Delivery Foundation's Interoperability SIG. There are links in the slides on how to find out more about the Interoperability SIG and the Continuous Delivery Foundation. We thank you for listening to our talk.
your interest in interoperability in cloud-native continuous delivery, and we welcome your questions.